Hi, everybody. Dave Clark, inspectcheck.net. Today, uh, the title says, would you start this? So I just want to um, um, set the stage. So I'm at the inspection. Get that out of my way. I'm at the inspection, and um, it is a steam boiler. Okay? That's all I'm going to tell you. It's a steam boiler. Um, and it is uh, not at the time when you probably would need a steam boiler or any boiler. Um, so it's so it's actually not you know running at the time, but but all indications were that it was, and I mean, the house is lived in. And um, let me share my screen. So you get down to the basement, and you see. Make sure I do the right one. You see this, like a bigger, even bigger. Even bigger than that. There you go. This is all you need to see. All right. So you see this, and what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to turn it on. You're going to turn on the thermostat and uh, get this thing to fire up. Are you going to do that? Okay. Now look. So it's steam, and we see that this is at zero, and that's where it's supposed to be because it's not operating. Okay. Unlike a hydronic boiler. That's going to have some pressure, maybe anywhere from 8 to 12 or even up to 15 pounds of pressure. Um, the temperature will be at room temperature. So both gauges, both, both dials on a, on a hydronic boiler are going to have, are going to be somewhere, right? Um, they're not going to be at zero. If they're at zero, that's another show. We'll talk about that later. But this one is at zero where it's supposed to be. So that's the first thing that tells me that's okay. But let's take a look at the sight glass. And I could even make that bigger for you. And I'll move it over, move it up. Look at the sight glass. And so where is the water? And the answer is right here. Okay. Now, we know that on a, uh, steam, on a steam, it really should be up here in the top part, right? A lot of um, uh, manufacturers will tell you at least three quarters, three quarters high. Okay. But at the very, uh, you know, at the, at the smallest amount, depending on that auto fill valve, and there's a lot of other things that have to happen. But, you know, if it's not at least at half, at least at half, but I really want to see it up there, you know, um, I would not start it because what's going to happen is you, there's a chance that you can cook that. Okay, so we really need to be in this upper area here, you know, that water down here. Not going to cut it. I'm not going to turn that on because we do not want to fry that, that heat exchanger, all right? Let me show you something else real quick here. And I'll show you how, you know, how we're going to report on that. It's simple enough. But again, the gauge. So here's one, too. Water's filthy, right? Um, but anyway, here's, here's where the manufacturer, because this, this is a manufacturer, not an installer sticker. It says water level is there, okay? Now, technically, this is more than half just barely barely probably you know i'm thinking half is probably right about there so technically it's above half so there you you probably won't damage it but i would say to you if this were they this is where they want the water level and it's not there i would make a note of it now if the homeowner's there and they want to manually put it in if it's manual you know all the newer ones now have um auto fill valves but um, they could be, they could be shot too. Obviously, it's not working or it's not set properly because it should be in this area and it's not. So, um, I would not turn this on either. And I know some of you are saying, "Oh, it's more than half. You should be okay." And you're probably right. But this is where the water level is, and that's where it needs to be. And this is where I would take a picture and say, you know, unable to start unit um, because the water is not at the proper level. It could cause damage to the heat exchanger. So you ask me how I would write that. Pretty simple. I mean, this one, I know a lot of people take, you need to take tons of pictures. So I would just take one picture and that's it. So we're going to go over to heating. And again, same thing. Where is it located? Um, I, I don't know if I would put unit not operable because I don't really know that. We can't see anything about the the gauge because it's at zero where it's supposed to be. So in this case, it's just going to be steam. And it talks about gives your client some uh, advice on that and the condition of the unit. Um, and if you looked at both of them, actually, there's definitely considerable corrosion noted to the water chambers. I would make a note of that too.
Okay. Um, but then we're going to go to the response. And this is where, you know, thermostat, wherever that's located, PTUs, um, you could put that in there wherever. Uh, and then the fuel type in this case was natural gas. But we can't put the unit responded to the thermostat or controls. It did not respond properly. That would really be reserved for, you know, it's short cycling or it took, it, you know, it took a time to go on or it didn't move. But I'm just going to put the heating unit did not respond. Okay. And I'm going to put, I'm going to qualify that and put uh, unable to operate or start unit uh, due to low water level okay and it will continue on inspect check says recommend the unit and the thermostat is evaluated by a qualified heating contractor in this case we could take thermostat out well we don't know we actually don't know if the thermostat's any good so i guess i would probably leave it in because they might as well check it while they're there um, but anyway that's what i would put i can't do it we could still inspect the flu pipe we could still inspect the supply and return pipes no problem if there's any corrosion on the pipes here you know um uh, and we can do that uh, there's no expansion tank on that unit but um that's it simple as that it, you know we're not going to take a chance frying that that heat exchanger okay so that was the question would you start this unit my answer is no I'd uh, like to hear your answers. Maybe maybe you would, or maybe you would add water to it. Uh, I think that that's, you're, you're, uh, it's a bad idea to do that, to manually add water to it, or even try to figure out what the problem is. The, the issue is that, you know, they know they're having a home inspection and there's a problem with it. They may not even know it. They may have been running it that low for a long time, which is not a good idea. So I um, hope that gave you a little insight on steam. They're still out there. Uh, I've got a couple pictures of brand new, high efficient steam units. Um, I could share them with you too, and I will do that. So uh, please subscribe. We have more videos like this coming. Uh, and I got so much material. It's a lot of fun sharing it. You can also go to homeinspectortrainingonline.com uh, for even more training uh, videos and um, some nice white papers and uh, our blog. Till I see you next time, have a great day.